and of course, uh, we know that we're in the month of Ramadan. We're not looking at um, solely at um, Ramadan issues. Uh, that aspects have been touched in the various discussions, either on New Dawn or Tonjo. But um, we don't, uh, without missing word, we know that um, if you look at the decision, uh, the situation in the world and the country, uh, the Islamic religion has been on the front burner, especially when it comes to extremism and the kind of pronouncement those who are involved in one extremism have made uh, recently or in recent past. So we want to look at Islam and the challenge of violent extremism. And of course, um, all the way from Ibadan, he, uh, he came this morning and he's right here in the studio. I'm talking about um, Dr. Daoud Amou Alaga. Uh, he's, a, he's a known big fish and we are happy to have him right here in the house again. He's the Chief Missionary uh, Forum for Comparative Sermons Focus. He's also an educationist and of course a member of the governing board of um, an institution in Nigeria. Uh, anyway, let us welcome Dr. Dawood Abou Alaga to the studio this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Salam yes. alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Of course, Ramadan, Ramadan Karim. Ramadan Karim and uh, <laughs> good morning and well wishes to viewers far and near. Mm. You're, you're welcome, Doctor. <laughs> Thank you very much. So let's look at Islam. We know that there are some people, there are fanatics, there are people who genuinely believe Islam and what it does. So let's look at the extremist aspect of Islam. Do we, can we say we have the extremist aspect or people are making it seem so? Thank you very much. That's a very good one. Mm. You know, I have this caveat, study Islam, don't study Muslim. And I repeat that for the purpose of emphasis. Study Islam, don't study Muslim. And that as a caveat, is even elastic. Study Christianity, don't study Christians. Mm. And more elastically, study traditional religion. Don't study traditionally. Because not every Christian behaves Christianly. And in like manner, not every Muslim behaves Islamically. There is nothing, when you are talking along the line of a terrorism, by my own definition, terrorism, extremism, means act of a wickedness, extreme wickedness. And Islam is about compassion. In the Holy Quran, chapter 28, verse 77, Allah says, Meaning, and seek with whatever Allah has endowed you with the home of the hereafter. But do not forget your own portion of this world. Do good as Allah has been good to you. Don't spread mischief on the land, for Allah loves not the mischief makers. Now, if you want to elaborate on that verse of the Quran, where does terrorism? fanaticism, wickedness of the highest order, where does it come in? Islam is not about extremism. And everything that a Muslim does and should do is documented in the Quran. There is nowhere. Because Islam is a combo, a combo of theory and practical. There is nothing left to chance in Islam. In the Quran chapter 6 verse 38, Allah says, Ma farat na fil kitab we have not left anything or mentioned in this book. I don't know. It is based on people interpretation that we now have extremism. Extremism, if you want to define it along the line of wickedness, along the line of terrorism, honestly, it has no place in Islam. And there are ample evidences to crystallize that, to become a conviction for you and I. Mm. Okay, uh, but uh, look, Islam is known as a religion of peace. Uh, and of course, um, somehow uh, contrasting uh, that uh, slogan, when you look at um, the way people that have uh, been involved in terrorism, uh, banditry, are actually making use of the trajectory of Islam to say they are fighting for the religion. Uh, where do we place this? Now, you see, this will be a common denominator of this discussion. Study Islam, don't study Muslims. 
we know that even in this only month of Ramadan, mm. some Muslims are still be behaving on Islamically. Mm. You see, you cannot do anything outside the purview of the Quran. And the Quran is very, very clear. For example, when you go to the Quran, chapter 2, verse 190, Allah says there in it, and fight in the cause of Allah, those who fight you. Those who fight you, underline, capitalize. And Allah says further, do not transgress the limit, for Allah lost not the transgressors. Transgressors are the extremists. In Islam, it, has, it is acceptable to fight in self-defense. It is acceptable to fight in self-defense. Even when a Muslim has to fight and is fighting in self-defense, there are rules. There are rules of engagement. There are red lines which we are you must not cross. We have this bulky edition of the Quran translated by Yusuf Ali into English language. When you now look at it, the exegesis, for the explanation of that verse of the Quran, fight in the course of Allah, those who fight you, and do not transgress the meaning. He now says that transgressing the limit means fighting with non combatant People are not uh, fighting you. Don't fight them. Mm, mm. <clears throat> don't fight with two men. Don't destroy the crop or plantation of people you are even fighting with. Don't attack the sick one. Don't attack the elderly. That is documented there. So if anybody calls himself or herself a Muslim and is doing anything that is in contradiction to that stipulation in the Quran, now the Muslimness, to use that word, of that particular person has to be redefined. Islam is about peace. You see, every nation of the world is interested in peace. And you cannot have peace where there is no balance of terror. Mm. Every nation of the world has a standing army because of inevitability of warfare. So in Islam, Islam is about self-defense. And when even you are fighting in self-defense, you must not be ruthless. Islam is about civility, not impunity. It is about nicety, not banality. And anybody who says anything to the contrary, I will challenge that particular person to produce his proofs. Mm. So Islam is it's about a peace. Now, before you jump to that, look at Boko Haram. You see, I see it as mischief. Mischief of many media people, calling them Islamic sect, Islamic organization. What is Islamic about them? There was a time when the army, when they capture so many of them, and by the time they got to their den, what they find there, they found condom, they found mm. charms, and the rest of it. Mm. Are these people Muslims? Mm. And I always say that if what Boko Haram is doing, if anybody says that is Islamic, then no reasonable person must be a Muslim. If what Boko Haram is doing, killing people conscienceslessly, heartlessly, mindlessly, if anybody says that is Islamic, then no reasonable person must be a Muslim. No reasonable person must be a Muslim. In fact, when you find anybody with the tag of a Muslim, you must run away. What they are doing is not Islamic. And these days, they have even captured a number of people who claim to be Boko Haram and who are not even Northerners nor Muslims. Mm. <coughs> I don't know. Okay, okay Charles, go ahead. Go okay. ahead. Commissioner, let me ask you. You've been talking about uh, those people that are not practicing Islam well and they claim to be Muslims. So what are the challenges you face as body of um, uh, Islamic leaders to, to face these people and tell others who think they are fighting for the religion that, yes, this is not how they should do it, this is not the right thing they are doing, and it is not Islam? Because, sir, because mm -hmm. you must agree with uh, us that um, uh, they, they also win people to their side. Right with their and extremism they and their thoughts. And of course, uh, uh, the, 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 the dogmatism now comes in and the problem continues. Whereas, they know that that is not Islamic way. But those with naivety who follow them don't know that they are doing the wrong thing. Well, it burns that, you know, you know we mostly we have uh, one problem. Our bad trust as Muslims is that many of us are Muslim by chance, not by choice, mm. by chance of biology. 
because you are, you are born into a Muslim home. Your father is an allergy, mother is a, perhaps an allergy. See in the Western world, those who are accepting Islam there, they attach knowledge, seeking, seeking knowledge to the acceptance of Islam. Yeah, it is not so. And we are trying to engage in a number of admonitions. Mm. But just like, uh, you see, the topic you have discussed are very, very interesting, very, very enlightening. You know, you were talking of uh, abundant uh, food production. Mm. Today, an idle hand is the devil's workshop. Many people are jobless. And when people are jobless, honestly, they are easy to recruit for any form of banality. Mm. That's mm. the problem we're having. Mm. No matter the extent of your admonition, preachment, and the rest of it, as long as you have uh, this type of uh, silly situation on our hand, many people, Christian, Muslims, non-Muslims generally, will always migrate to that particular side. Mm. That is the problem we're having. People are preaching, particularly in this month of Ramadan. This is a popular station. You know that uh, in this month of Ramadan, you know the number of uh, Muslim leaders, Muslim scholars who are preaching here, and they are preaching on some other media. But despite all those things, since we have a, a, we have a problem on our hand, problem of a food insecurity, problem of a acute poverty, joblessness, and the rest of it, um, on, on, on employment and underemployment. So people can become, a, they are vulnerable. Vulnerability is the trouble now. Vulnerability to evil and all the rest of it. So that's the trouble. It's not that people are not preaching. And those of you are in the media, you are not even if those of us who are Muslims. <laughs> you see, wrong negative profiling of Islam is very common in the media. Negative partisan profiling of Islam. See Boko Haram. They are terrorizing the northern part of uh, the country. See IPOP, ESN. They are terrorizing uh, the southern part of the country. Mm. Whereas those of them in the north, they are profiled as Islamists. Mm. Those in the east, nothing like a religious uh, affiliation. Simply I pop. Simply I pop. And when in the northern part of the country you have a terrorist attack, they call them uh, Muslim uh, fundamentalists. Mm -hmm. When you have a similar thing like that in the east, unknown government. Unknown, thank you very much. <laughs> unknown government militant. So those of you are in the media, you are creating a lot of uh, negative profile for those of us who are Muslim. Mm -hmm. And you know the media. The media is the be-all and end-all. When you are talking along the line of information, enlightenment, and the rest of it, it is a media creation. All these things are media creation. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, yes, uh, we, we, you have just said it now. Uh, Boko Haram in the north, high pub in the southeast, um, south-south we have militants. But to come to think of it, what policy of government, or we, we want to say, if you look at some policies of government, can't these policies be termed Boko Haram, Hypob, or militants? Or is it until you carry gun? Is it until you blow up houses that will become terrorists? Terrorism could also come in the form of governance. You agree? So what is uh, uh, what, what, what should be done here? You see. I'm not pinpointing or pigeonholing. I don't want to pigeonhole any particular political party. But all the political parties in Nigeria, they are more or less the same. You know, it is uh, easy for somebody who's in APC to migrate to PDP, and somebody in PDP to migrate to uh, PDP too. The difference is just um, the, the difference, difference in, in part. Six the difference is dozen. just uh, nomenclature. Uh, six and a half dozen. Just in there. Yes, six and a half dozen. <laughs> and you know that. Uh, Politics today has become a money-making venture. I always uh, advocate that, uh, you see, politics has to de be demonetized. If it is not demonetized, talk there and the rest of it. I'm not aware. I'm on the, talking like an academic. An academic is never assertive. It seems, it appears, to the best of my knowledge, <laughs> as much as I know. In my opinion. I am not aware of any politician in Nigeria, no table politician in Nigeria who does not hire and keeps dog, uh, dogs. I'm not aware. And when it is time for election, they harm them. After the elections, the aspirations are not met. And what happens? The guns and all other armaments, they, don't disarm, they, them. Are with them. they mm. don't disarm them. 
and they just unleash terror. So the government, not talking of APC, not talking of PDP, not even talking along the line of the present players, even the past players, including our much referred by Baba Obasanjo, they are all call people. They are all call people. And you know what happened during Ngigi time? Ngigi as a sitting governor, see how he was disgraced, sent out a packing from the government house, and we knew the sponsor for the whole thing, and that is still happening today. So when you are talking along the line, and you know, when you are talking along the line of insecurity, insecurity is in Nigeria is in phases. Hmm. By the time about Pat John Joe was there, it was a phase. By the time uh, uh, Jonathan came, took another phase. By the time Jonathan uh, left, and the Buhari is now there, it is taking another phase. Like, uh, you see, there's a contaminous relationship between the topic you discuss and the one we are discussing now, full sufficiency. Imagine if the government were to be proactive. All these youth coppers, they are drafted to the farm. They are encouraged to become farmers. And they know that through farming, they can become a big man, money man. How many people will take it to robbery? How many people will take to banditry, kidnapping, and the rest of it? So the government is essentially and inherently culpable in all this mess. That's my submission. Okay, mm. doctor, let's 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 provide solutions now. The program is also for us to tell the people in government the code what they should do and if they will do is left to them. So what do you think we should do looking at Islam and challenges of violent extremists? What do you think should be done now to curtail the, 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 the line of communication to curtail what is happening and to curtail people uh, associating a violent extremists to Islam. Thank you very much. It should start from those of you in the media. We have written so much to the media, various media organizations, talking about Boko Haram. They are non Muslim. Don't give them the tag of, that tag of Islam, but they refuse to listen. And why? Because in Nigeria, yeah, religion has been politicized. Hmm. Let Christians be doing anything that is good. Today, those of us who are Muslims, a number of us will say it's not good. And in the same way, if Muslims are doing anything that is good, a number of Christians will also say it's not good. Whereas, that is not the basic teaching of uh, Christianity, nor is it the basic teaching of Islam. Today, we have turned ourselves into mutual rival. And that mutual rivalry is even destructive, negative. Except when, so, we're, except when we are sharing money. When we are sharing <laughs> money. You see, when any politician is going into office, if he knows that it is the religion, platform from the religion that will help him, he would rather use that platform of religion. And by the time they get there, nothing like religion again. Mm. You can see that any time they want to share anything in the National Assembly, and they respect it as state assembly, you don't see them fighting. Mm. You will hear. You won't hear. Mm. Now, when you are talking along the line of solution, the first solution is that uh, the media should be non-partisan. One. The second solution is that, uh, you see, the joblessness is at its peak in Nigeria today. Joblessness and underemployment. Imagine a graduate. He is working in an institution and is uh, getting uh, 15,000 naira. What happened to such a particular person? So when you are talking along the line of a solution there, yeah, all lands must be on deck. Like uh, the American people will say, if you see something, say something. If you see something and yeah, you see something, that thing that you see may even be the cause of your own destruction. So let us be godly. We are religious in Nigeria. We are not godly. Churches on Sunday will be jam-packed. You see predominance of people in mosques on Friday. But these are the people stealing Nigeria money. These are the people who are even uh, cutting corners. And they are there pretending to be godly, whereas they are only religious. So religion should play a big role in sanitizing this particular community. And when we are talking along the line of religion, playing a big role, those of us who are religionists should not, we should not be hypocritical. We are very, very hypocritical. Mm. If you look around chapter 10, mm. verse 69, Allah says, Opura mm. Liars will never prosper. Mm. And in the Bible too, you have uh, something like that. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 22 to 24. It says, 
woe unto that person who calls black white and somebody who calls black white but today what do you see most of our religious leaders they are happy they are prosperous and you see that uh, the followers are not similarly prosperous nor happy double standard hmm. All right, uh, it's been very uh, interesting. But uh, where, where, where this, the harmony comes in here, I know that there's something in Nigeria uh, where we have both Muslim leaders and Christian leaders coming together to foster religious... Like Nairek? Nairek, religious ha harmony. How much of harmony has Nairek brought on board so far? Hmm. Well, I may say... If there is any, it is very, very insignificant, very infinitesimal. Because you will see that uh, Christian leadership and Muslim leadership, you can always see the mutual attack. NCIE, Nigerian Sumi Council for Islamic Affairs, saying something and can't say another thing. See the latest on Pantami, see where NCIE is standing, and see why, where Khan is also standing. If the bottom line, is non-hypocrisy, we won't have problem. At the Nairag there, honestly, is a, they are just together. They are just together physically. They are not together intrinsically. They are not together intrinsically. And That's the trouble. You, you just mentioned Pantami now. Um, from the moral point of view, what's your view? You have right to your personal opinion. Now, you see, that is his own personal opinion. Whatever I say accredited to him is his own personal opinion. I would rather, you see, evaluate issues based on the dictates of Islam. I have told you that terrorism is not part of Islam. And let anybody, you can even uh, invite me another time and invite anybody who says that terrorism is part and parcel of uh, Islam. And we now have a dialogic encounter. And you will see uh, what the result will be. Anybody, don't. You see, Pantami was not uh, appointed by Muslims. Mm. He's not representing Muslims in that cabinet. Mm. Or do you think he's representing Muslims? No, Just like uh, any Christians at the MDA, he's not representing the Christians. Because nobody came to the church to say, <laughs> we want, and nobody came to the mosque. <laughs> we give us uh, an appointee. <laughs> they do primary. <laughs> and even the extent of uh, the belief of uh, some of these uh, leaders, whether you are talking along the line of Islam or Christianity, the extent of their belief is even debatable. We have a number of them who claim to be Muslims and they are not even the Muslim prayers. We have a number of them who claim to be Christians and they are Christian in their attitude. So when you come to this particular issue, don't be the only on religion. But Tamir was appointed on his own personal merit, not as the representative of the Muslim. Stay more, if he wants more on his personality, is that his own personality? Whether you want to evaluate him negatively or positively, now that's over to you, or up to you. But he was not appointed as a minister based on the mandate of the Muslims, mm. and that's the truth. Mm. Okay, doctor, let's look at the effect now. Effect of what we are discussing on the society. We know that um, I, I youth are taken away and they have turned some have turned to something else and at the same time we are seeing some that are repenting and coming back to the society so what is the effect does it have a ripple effect no doubt about that mm. no doubt we are all in this uh, particular society if a particular society is good and you want to be bad in that particular society one will have a lot of problem and ditto for a society that is bad and you want to be good it's just like uh, somebody, uh, somebody who, some people lost uh, a huge sum of money. Mm -hmm. Another person just by chance stumbled on that money and returned it to the owner. And you know what our people were saying? They were just mocking him. Because of uh, what our what, uh, 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 society has turned to. Has turned to. So, the, we have to do a lot of work as Muslims, as Christians, as traditionalists, as non Muslims generally, to sanitize this particular society. Because I, as I always say, if you have the wherewithal to sponsor your children through private uh, secondary school, private university, 
and where the public universities are having problem. Your own children don't even have problem. Don't forget that your own children and my own children who are blessed to go through private uh, education uninterruptedly. Those of them, their colleagues, who are not as lucky, will become their bad trust later. So you see, let me hide this one. A Muslim must be very, very charitable. Very, very charitable. You know that all the all the teachings of Islam center on compassion. We are now in the month of Ramadan. Ramadan is about empathy. Mm -hmm. Now, a rich man being made to experience hunger so that he can become empathetic. When somebody comes, cap in hand, seeing that he's feeling hungry. And in like manner, you see that when we Muslims, even when we are in the mosque, you see, the issue of equality comes in only in the mosque. He say, please, we all animals are equal, and no animal is more equal than the other. Because no chairs, no benches are provided in the mosque. And that tells you that uh, you must be your brother's uh, keeper. Because that brother of yours, there is nothing in you that is superior to that particular person. When a madman gives birth to a child, that child comes into the heart nakedly. Even when a rich person gives birth to another child, that child also comes to the heart nakedly. So, if we are compassionate, honestly, most of the problems we have been have, and I should have this one. You know, let us go beyond the internal. There are external factors in this insecurity problem. UK, they are keeping hype of uh, Kanu there. And uh, despite the fact that uh, justifiably or unjustifiably, Nigerian government has declared that uh, Kanu is a fugitive. Mm -hmm. They are not ready to extradite him. Because after colonialism, they have a new colonialist uh, agenda. So it has external factor. See uh, Sanfara now. Sanfara now is because of the ample good deposit there that is causing a lot of problems in that part of the country. And when you are talking along the line of uh, Muslim being the picture, when you are talking along the line of uh, uh, this uh, terrorism, don't forget that the northern part of the country, where Boko Haram, Bantry and the rest of them, where they predominate, that is a predominantly Muslim uh, populated area. If these people are representative of Islam, is that the place where they should be fighting? They should not even fight uh, elsewhere. But is that the place where they should be fighting? The bomb mosque, you can remember that there was a time when Sanusi was there as the Imam of Kano. The bomb, it was uh, even the Imam, presiding Imam, the bomb at the Kano Central Mosque, and 120 people died. And you can see that uh, that is not a uh, part of the teaching of Islam. And to show that those who are saying that uh, they are fighting only Christians, they are killing Christians, no, no doubt about that. But more Muslims have been killed in that particular place. And you will see the, the complicity of UK, US in the crisis we are having. So when you are talking along the line of uh, resolving this crisis, it should be internal and external. It should be addressed internally and externally. Hmm. All right, uh, we can uh, we cannot <laughs> we cannot have um, we cannot be tired when you have um, Dr. Daoud Amau Alaga as your guest, especially when it comes time to these contemporary issues uh, that has to do with religion and what have you. But um, our time is up. We want to thank him very much for having time to come onto the program at a very very short notice so we appreciate you so much sir Thank you very of course much. we want to say that um, definitely this won't be the last time this is not mm -hmm. your first time on OGTV and this won't be the last time you will come to OGTV Inshallah. as we shall always have um, well quickly just say uh, your Ramadan message to all Nigerians well Ramadan message is that uh, Muslims right now we are good people we are good citizens of Nigeria <laughs> and normal laws and behaviors or most of us, we have abandoned it. After Ramadan, many of us will just uh, be like a back to sender. Those who go back to their various activities after Ramadan, these are people who regard Allah as a periodic guest, who only comes in Ramadan, <laughs> and after Ramadan, he evaporates. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the Quran, chapter 3, verse 5, Allah says, In Allah, la yafa alayhi shayun fil aridi wa la fisama. Nothing is hidden from the purview of Allah. So, as we are behaving well now, it should not be a temporary thing. Thereafter, we should be behaving well. And that will help our community here. Yoruba, mm -hmm. if I decide to be good and you also decide to be good, no bad people will be in this society.
Thank, thank you very much. Uh, it's a good way to end it. Uh, once again, I want to thank you. And of course, uh, Charity James and I will return next uh, Wednesday, next week, God willing. Uh, it could just be the Eid of Future Day. Mm, I'm not maybe. too sure. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> so thanks for watching. We'll see you again some other time. yourself in Abelkuta, Ogun State, Nigeria. Your home is right on your fingertips. Yes, Continental Sweats. Continental Sweats is the only place with a well-equipped gym.